Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this, the fourth video in our series about Alpha Zero's opening strategies. This video is focusing on the London system and a powerful new idea that Alpha Zero has come up with for White. The London system was named after the 1922 tournament that was played in London and in it Roxy and Rubinstein both played the moves that you can see on the board here. Actually another strong English player, Joseph Henry Blackburn, played the London system before that. He played it often in the 1890s and he was an interesting character. He was nicknamed the Black Death and was also famous for playing simuls and at the same time drinking whiskey. It's appropriate that Alpha Zero found, uh, enjoys playing the London system as it was made in London uh, by DeepMind, which is based near King's Cross St Pancras. Um, another English GM, Simon Williams, who lives in London, he has recently made a DVD series on the London system. So the London system is um, is often thought to be uh, um, a quiet and uh, and solid system, but uh, well, both Simon's DVD and uh, and this game you know really show that uh, it's got a lot of attacking potential. Actually, I played it when I was uh, when I was young, and I had a, a standard attacking setup that was very very effective. And what's interesting about this game is that um, both Alpha Zero um, and Leela Zero which uh, is a, um, a project that was based on, uh, on the research that, uh, that DeepMind uh, released in, uh, in 2017 and 2018, um, also chooses the same plan. And actually, um, they play virtually the same game until the 17th move where they deviate. Uh, so it's very, very interesting to see that. And uh, we'll take a look at both games uh, in the subsequent DVD. So let's have a look at it. Right, let's get into the game then. So um, the opening starts with uh, d4 and after knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop f4, we are into the, the London system. So the London system is rather different to the uh, the main lines of the uh, Queen's Pawn openings, which is c4. And um, uh, with c4, um, white actually I suppose it adds a bit of instability into the central situation, um, you know, attacking the uh, the black centre straight away. With bishop f4, white's aiming for quite solid development. Um, putting the bishop outside the pawn chain, uh, it's going to play e2 to e3, and then probably develop the kingside pieces, bishop d3, and normally reinforce the centre with c2 to c3. The one thing about uh, about this, uh, this move, there's only one little drawback, and that's that uh, the bishop on f4 undefends the pawn on b2 and that's actually a pawn that in the queen's pawn openings black can attack very easily and those are always the sharpest counters to uh to moves like bishop f4 or um or bishop g5 the, the trompovsky so um in this uh particular game stockfish played a very sharp line and played the immediate queen b6 attacking the pawn on d4 and attacking the pawn on b2 the London system is quite trendy at the moment and it experienced a surge in popularity because world champion Magnus Carlsen has started adopting it regularly. He does it via the two bishop f4 move order, so he goes d4, d5, bishop f4 straight away. And he's done amazingly well with it. He's scored an astonishing 19 wins, 5 draws and only 2 losses across all forms of chess, so he's got a performance rating of 3010 with the London system. The London system was actually a rarity in the match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. They just played one game in it, but the result of that game was both exciting and topical. So with Queen B6, uh, Black is attacking uh, B2 and also attacking the pawn on D4. And uh, there have been quite a few grandmaster games in this line. Um, white plays d takes c5, black plays queen b2. So black's making a lot of moves with the queen, but black is also wrecking white's pawn structure. So very exciting game. Bishop b5, e6, castles. Um, and now black plays um, bishop e7. Um, you might expect bishop takes c5, 
Um, but black actually, by playing bishop e7, black wants to give himself the chance of taking on c5 with the queen um, and thus finding a path back uh, to safety for the black queen, which is a little bit exposed. Um, I can just show you one sort of sample variation that shows the, um, uh, the danger that the black queen is in. So this move interested me quite a lot. I spent quite a while analysing it. So bishop c7, stopping the queen from coming back to a5 and white threatening rook b3, uh, trapping the queen. And if black played a move like queen a3, just to, uh, uh, you know, to meet rook b3 with queen takes a2, then white could play this move knight c4. And after d takes c4, then there's queen d8 checkmate. Very the nice. Queen can't be taken because the knight is pinned. Exactly, by the bishop on b5. So, I mean, there's a lot of danger for uh, for blank. It's actually quite a fraught position. Um, but Stockfish played the move that's been played by um, all the grandmasters, which is bishop e7. And here, alpha zero um, varies. And uh, also, Leela zero uh, varies. And they play a move that I think is very strong. It's a very nice novelty. So it could uh, just rejuvenate this line. Um, to call it actually, um, I've got to be a little bit careful. It's not actually um, a novelty. One uh, game between two 2300 players was played like this. But um, the concept that Alpha Zero and Leela Zero uh, play in their games is completely different, completely new. So E4. Um, yeah, there's some, um, again, there's lots of little tricks based around uh, trapping the um, uh, the Black Queen and also exploiting the fact that the king is in the centre. I think my favourite, um, well, let, let's show you both lines because they're very nice. If D takes C4, then white plays Knight C4 and uh, E takes F3 is met by Rook B3 and the Queen is trapped um, because if uh, Queen D4, we can actually just take that. And uh, as Natasha pointed out, the Knight is uh, pinned to the king. Uh, the the um, continuation that um, uh, that really surprised me actually was after knight takes e4, white can take on e4, takes, and play this very unusual manoeuvre, takes, takes, and bishop d6. So it's stopping black from, uh, from castling um, by attacking the bishop on e7. And um, if black tries to, uh, to get away with winning a piece, then queen check... Uh, now if king e8 then queen c6 check picks up a rook on a8 and after king e7 white has the again amazing idea rook b3 um, and then rook takes f3 check and the black king is in is in huge danger um, quite interesting to see that that pawn that the uh, black queen took that opened the uh, the uh, the b file for the, for the white rook and it's making a lot of use uh, of it in these variations so um Stockfish played the uh, the move that was also played in the human game, sensible move, castles. But here, Alpha Zero and Leela Zero play um, a novelty, and uh, it's a very strong concept. It's this move E4 to E5. Um, what's the idea of this move? Well, after Knight D7, we've kind of got a, a sort of a French um, wing gambit kind of structure um, in which white, you know, sacrificed a, a pawn on the queen side, but has got this pawn wedge on e5. And that pawn wedge on e5, that drives away a knight on f6 and, you know, removes some uh, defensive uh, capability from black's king side. And also, you know, white's going to be a pawn down because black's going to win this pawn on c5. But the, the rook on, on b1, you know, attacks the pawn on b7 and keeps black's queen side sort of, um, yeah, very, um, uh, well, very cramped. So it's, it's quite difficult for, um, for, uh, for white to get, uh, for, for black to get free in this position. So, um, um, and at, actually, uh, um, I mean, you need some real engine tactics in order to, uh, uh, in order to extricate your queen here. Um, because after knight b3, it looks quite, quite difficult for the black queen to get out. But black does actually have a move here. It's queen b4, attacking uh, the bishop on b5 and the bishop on f4. So knight bd4, queen c5. And there's an interesting uh, moment here because um, uh, white could actually win the pawn back uh, here. So white could actually play knight takes c6, b takes c6 and bishop b3. And uh, after queen a3, you take on c6. But after a move like rook b8, you know, blacks freed himself an awful lot. Um, so um, both alpha zero and leela zero played uh, the move rook e1, 
knight d4, knight d4, just keeping the pressure on the black position. Um, and after a6, bishop d3, g6, um, blocks off the, uh, the, uh, the b1, h7 diagonal. So black's now threatening to take the knight on d4. So white's got to do something about this knight. And this is where there's a, a bit of a divergence here. So, um, in its game against uh, Ansax at a CCCC, I think that's enough C's, Rapid Rumble <coughs> in 2018, um, um, Lila Zero, sorry, played the move Knight to F3. So this move Knight F3 um, has the idea of supporting the advance of the pawn with H4 to H5 against the king's side. And I um, um, can just show you a few of the next moves uh, here. So uh, black went b5, queen d2, h4. It's um, That's a very typical um, advance um, against the black uh, king side. So um, uh, bishop b7, bishop g5, knight h2, trying to get into, uh, into uh, the g4 square, and then f6 or h6. And after h5, um, uh, Lila Zero played uh, an amazing move here. Uh, but a very typical move, um, a move that we look at a lot in uh, in Game Changer, and that's uh, this move G4, attacking the uh, the, uh, uh, the Black King side. And this game, this Leela Zero game, um, is analysed in detail on the excellent King's Crusher YouTube channel, which is the go-to place for Leela Zero information. I'm a friend of King's Crusher, actually. I know him from my days at Barnet Chess Club. And I used to play for the Barnet team and try from Gavriel. King's Crusher was the captain of that team. And he did an excellent job there too, as well. So um, what's very nice about this is that um, um, obviously you know, Lila Zero is based on, um, inspired by uh, the science uh, that, uh, that DeepMind released. Um, in their scientific papers. And here you see that um, um, this way of meeting, uh, of pushing the h-pawn, and when black, black plays h5, of installing a bishop on g5 and then attacking the king side with g4 is, uh, well, is very typical. And we give a number of examples in, uh, in Game Changer. But now have a look at, to see what uh, Alpha Zero did. It's slightly different and yet somehow the same. So uh, the one thing about uh, that um, uh, putting the knight on f3 uh, does, it keeps them, it brings the knight into play on the king's side, but the white queen finds it a little bit hard to um, uh, to get involved. So Alpha Zero played a different uh, idea, and no idea whether it's uh, better or not. I think they're completely equivalent, but the uh, the strategy is exactly the same, which is really really interesting. So after knight b3, queen c7. Alpha zero plays queen g4, so the queen gets directly into play. And um, uh, we get this move h4 as well. And as a follow-up, we get this move bishop g5 as well, installing the bishop on the um, on the uh, the outpost. Um, and after bishop g5, hg, b6, queen f4, um, alpha zero is going to aim to play g4 to attack the pawn on h5 and open up the king's side. So it's the same idea as we just saw in the Leela Zero game. Exactly. So um, different settings, slightly different disposition of the pieces, but basic strategy, basic way of attacking the Black King side is the same, which is quite uh, quite interesting. Um, Stockfish defends very well here, actually. Um, and it's just nice to see how um, Stockfish distributes its pieces over the whole board. So um, it knows that um, G4 is coming in, so it puts the rook on H8 very, very early. Um, just to anticipate the opening of the um, of the H file, and um, after a little bit of toing and froing around with the queen, it also sends its rook, which isn't doing a great deal, into the white position in order to cause some annoyance. You know, attacking the bishop on d3, looking at the third rank, maybe going to a3 to attack the pawn on a2, and in that from that point of view, Stockfish is exploiting uh, you know the downsides to uh, to White's pawn sacrifice on the queen side because there's open open points there for the uh, for the uh, for the rook. Now um, there's a game in Game Changer called Python Squeeze in which um, uh, Stockfish anticipated the opening of the H trial um, by organising its pieces like that, but actually got itself incredibly stuck. Um, and what Alpha Zero managed to do was just play on the opposite side of the board. 
um, and just leave a rook on h8 sort of rotting in the corner, you could say. Um, in this position, it's a lot more difficult because um, um, there's no real advantage on the queen side and uh, there's no other break you can play for on the um, on the king side. So essentially, Alpha Zero is going to have to go head on against uh, Stockfish's defensive structure. It actually means that the game's tense, but kind of balanced, actually. So the game proceeded. Rook H4, G4, uh, takes, 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 Queen G4. Looks dangerous. Um, but somehow uh, um, just enough uh, defensive possibilities there. So rook b1, just trying to loosen up the uh, the queen, trying to a little bit. Uh, alpha zero is always looking on both sides of the board. Um, rook a2, rook b6, rook a4, very typical nasty, irritating pin from uh, from uh, from uh, stockfish, stopping the knight on d4 from moving. Um, the pieces get redeployed to the uh, king side, so looking for the H file. Um, but um, now Stockfish comes along with its trump. You have a pawn that uh, that Alpha Zero sacrificed in the opening. It's now going to try and queen. Um, and the game actually is is actually balanced, uh, strangely enough. So um, Queen F8. Um, what Stockfish doesn't want to allow is an invasion on the queen side with something like Queen A5. Because white is then threatening queen d8 check and rook h8 check, so um, stockfish picked um, the stockfish picked um, the move queen f8, keeping the rook uh, together, and uh, well, queen, oops, um, if you wanted uh, at this point, queen h1 would threaten rook h8, queen g7, queen e1, queen f8 would be the the kind of natural uh, way I think to uh, to end the game. Um, as it is, uh, the game continued for a number of moves. You always see this, actually, that both um, uh, Alpha Zero and Stockfish are very loath to um, uh, to agree a draw by repetition, and they try all sorts of uh, amazing, uh, creative ways to um, uh, to avoid the draw. But in the end, uh, you know, the game uh, ended in a perpetual check um, with some extra sacrifices. So um, we can just show you uh, show you how that game went because it's quite uh, it was quite uh, quite fun. Um, I would have been a bit nervous uh, to be honest uh, with this pawn coming down, but uh, but somehow uh, after a lot of different attempts, Queen e7, a1 Queen, then the perpetual check is pretty clear. Queen f8 check, Queen f7. So that was the game. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I, I found it fascinating. Uh, first of all, you know, actually, a very strong novelty. I think uh, very strong concept in the um, in the London system in this very topical line that um, I think is going to cause. Uh, uh, well, I think uh, top players going to be very interested in this, and also really nice to see that um, that both Alpha Zero and the, uh, the the chess a program that was inspired by its science. Um, find the same ideas up to move uh, same play the same moves up to move sixteen, and then still implement the same uh, uh, the same strategy, but then in a in a rather different way. You know, it's uh, it's quite amazing to uh, to see that, and uh, well, makes you realise how rich and how uh, how interesting chess is. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, keep watching out for new videos.